Hi my golden friend. Today we did and Jordan from Forest played against each other and Jordan won and we did had a huge blunder. I want to talk about this blunder and Ashila Hill of Vidit at this game. It's uh, quite entertaining. It is uh, following the principle of two weaknesses. Vidit had two weakness in his position and Jordan used these two weaknesses extremely well very well like a very experienced master should use it but this young guy did it in best shape so i fast forward the opening to reach to that position well i will talk a little bit about some critical moments in opening and mid game but mostly we focus on that very moment so let's go forward and here we basically arrive to a position that we call it's almost end of the opening notice that you cannot at this position you cannot fork the knight and rook why yeah simply you lose the knight and you cannot capture it in the rook because then you lose the queen so this is just a piece and of course jordan van forest didn't make a mistake and simply castled castle takes the knight takes back and of course you don't take it because then you will lose a piece yes you cannot take that pawn right now so first move the knight away then take it but defense the pawn and at this position jordan made a very interesting move push the pawn to f4 you usually don't want to destroy your king side structure but when you have a bishop pair, you want to open files, uh, diagonals, everything. You want to remove pawns as much as possible, especially if it blocks your bishop. This bishop on g3 was a tall pawn. Uh, I don't mean the tall, the grandmaster, tall, I mean very tall. Okay, takes, takes with the rook and defends the c pawn. No, three attacker, three defender, so you black cannot take it black attacks the e pawn and jordan goes a little bit passive defends the pawn it's not a big deal but he could have played a more active move of d4 earlier but he didn't anyways we go forward to see some exchange by vidit and vidit is very happy to doing ex exchanging pieces because he lacks a space and when you have less space you should exchange pieces as much as you can because yeah no, with, and you when you have less space you know there are less good squares and the possibility of mistaking and finding you now going to bad good square that you will see exactly in this game is higher when you have less space so you exchange pieces to not uh, to not be forced to move the pieces too much and it, it, you're even happy if you are ending up in pawn end games especially in this case because even though the d pawn of white is past pawn but it is weak and can be captured with black's king if we remove all pieces from the game so we go forward and knight penetrates in no white has only one strength the d pawn and it's almost we can call it weakness of black cap how black should find a way to deal with this d pawn also black doesn't like the bishop and push to this bishop and this is the next mistake of with it with it maybe thought that at this position white goes back with the bishop and then knight takes the bishop and everything is good but of course white doesn't give up a bishop pair right now when you destroy your opponent structure no the second weakness has been created the f pawn is weak. F pawn doesn't is a base of pawn chain and it's very weak. So defends the pawn with the king. Also gets rid of possible future attacks of bishop. Uh, doesn't want to have a queen and king in the same diagonal when the opponent has a white squared bishop. So defends the pawn, but this pawn is attacked with the rook. No, it is pinned by two direction by queen and rook so gets rid of one of the pins but the other still remains and here is the critical moment of the game what would you do at this position 
black to move and find the only good move. So principle of uh, lack of good squares is here. If you don't have many good squares to go, if you have only one square and see, Rook has one, two, three, four, five squares that nobody can capture it. Only one of them is good. And yes, the one that defends the F pawn is good. You should go there and defend the F pawn. But we didn't do that. We did play Rook C8. And as you can see, engine evaluation from almost zero turned to plus six. Why? Why this happened? We did things that I guess uh, he was in a time trouble and I think at this moment he thought that okay I'm attacking bishop and when black move, white moves the bishop away I go back to defend the f6 pawn but white doesn't need to move the bishop just simply push the pawn uses the second weakness advanced pass pawn is a weakness in black camp and it's not just pushing the pawn and defending bishop it's attacking the queen it gains the tempo and no f pawn is weak, and you should defend it, and you cannot move the queen away from f pawn. And you have a, you have another weakness. The knight is not defended, so you should move it away. You cannot defend the knight with the rook. Notice that if you defend it, we just simply capture it, and then goodbye. This is the end of a day. But. Uh, the, so the only move that you have is here from no everything is force move the knight and then we want to attack the weak f pawn right so remove the defender okay defender moves okay no problem we use the second weakness we take it and what was the second weakness yes the past d pawn is a weakness in black camp give a check win the bishop and here is the end of the day and we did resigns after bishop e6 e6 is the end of the game you cannot defend the knight you can uh, you cannot move the knight as well because it takes the rook if your rook takes the bishop then the pass pawn is a queen and that's it i hope you enjoyed and remember to use the principle of two weaknesses create two weaknesses in your opponent camp and hope for best in time travel. Bye.